Hello, I'm Doom Dat, and I'm back on Bremster's channel today to solve another puzzle for you. About a month ago, as of the recording of this video, I was on recording a solve of a puzzle called No Gurdoku by Judawa. And in the comments, Judawa had reached out and mentioned that there was a sequel to that puzzle and wondered if that would be worth the solve as well. And Bremster suggested maybe I'd like to give it a shot. And like two, I would. I enjoyed the first one, so I'm sure this one's going to be great as well. Uh, full disclosure, before we get into the rules, I did attempt this puzzle about five days ago and got stuck about a third of the way through the puzzle. So I reached out to the setter and asked for some tips about where I should be looking next. So this won't be a totally blind solve, but most of the puzzle will be a uh, blind solve for me. Um, I may ask Bremster also if you'd like to see my solve of the first version of this puzzle to include a link in the comments or maybe a card on the screen somewhere up here. Um, and you can take a look at that either before or after this. From what I understand, it doesn't really matter which order you solve these in. So uh, let's get into the rules of this puzzle. So we have normal Sudoku rules. So in every three by three box, every row and every column, we have the digits one to nine once each. And this puzzle also has nonogram rules. So if you've not solved a nonogram, I'll walk through that. But um, these refer to these blue clues on the top and to the left of the grid. And what these are showing are the different numbers of consecutive runs of unshaded cells in the grid. Now, um, looking at one of these simple clues, the, the one digit here, so this six, for example, that's telling us that there has to be six digit or uh, six cells in a row consecutively that are unshaded anywhere in the row. And then all of the other cells are shaded. Um, and that could be, again, anywhere in this row, as long as there's six in a row, that uh, will satisfy this clue. Now, these other clues that have more than one digit, uh, let's take a look at this five with the question mark. Um, what this is saying is there's a run of five cells that are unshaded, um, separated by at least one shaded cell, and then followed by another run of consecutive cells. And these question marks can refer to any digit between one and nine. Uh, we have to figure that out as we solve the puzzle. So let's just say that this question mark was a one. We would need somewhere in this row, a string of five unshaded cells, followed by at least one shaded cell, and then one uh, unshaded cell. And then all the rest of the cells in the row would have to be shaded. So we have the five, and if this is a one, we have our one here. Um, another thing we could do is um, have more than one unshaded, uh, more than one shaded cell in between our consecutive runs. This is fine as well. Now the other parts of uh, the rule here are related to these yellow and red clues to the right and underneath the grid. And what these are showing are the sum of the digits in the shaded cells, so in between these consecutive runs. So for example, let's again pick on this uh, six clue here. Let's say that these six cells are unshaded and then these three shells are shaded. That means that these three cells here would have to sum to 18. The other part of this rule to keep in mind is the red digits or the red numbers are saying that the, when you read the digits in reading order, either from left to right or top to bottom, uh, if it's a red, cell, that means that those have to read as a prime number. And if it's yellow, it must not read as a prime number. So in other words, all red cells are given. So all the yellow cells must not be prime. So if we had this 18, for example, um, or let's take a look at a simpler one. Let's look at the seven. Let's say if we had these as unshaded and these two as shaded, um, these two, if they add to seven, it has to be a prime number. So we couldn't do something like 25 or two and five to add to seven, because 25 is not a prime number. We would have to do something like four and three to get a 43 as a prime number. Okay, so those are the rules for the puzzle. Like I said, I've already gotten started on this one, so um, we'll go through this again. If you'd like to solve it yourself, click on the link under the video and give it a shot. But right now, I'm gonna get started. So, where I like to start with these nonogram puzzles is to look at some of the, the rows and columns that are more crowded or have a higher number of um, unshaded cells in these clues. 
So if we take a look at this six, let's imagine that we have the most extreme to the left. All these six are consecutive. And this is our run. And then we also look from the right and say, what if they're all the way to the right? Now, where they overlap, that means that those cells are always going to be unshaded. Uh, because no matter which way we start from, we're always going to take at least these three cells. So I'm going to make those unshaded. And the same with the seven clue. We're going to have these seven as one option all the way to the left, or these seven all the way to the right. So these five cells are always going to be overlapping, and these will always be unshaded. And as you do more nonogram puzzles, these almost become automatic as you see these types of patterns. Taking a look at this five question mark, let's assume a minimum here of the question mark and let's say it's a one. So, and let's go all the way to the right. So we, this would be unshaded and this would be shaded. Now we count five and we know that all five of these cells in this case would be unshaded. So that's if all, the, all those clues are to the right. Now, if we also look from the left and look at this consecutive run of five, we get these five cells. So again, these three cells are always in uh, in the unshaded consecutive runs. So we can highlight those as unshaded. And then we don't know anything about the rest of this yet. Um, let's take a look at this question, these two question marks into three. Something we can do here is, again, if we minimize the question marks, um, we're going to get a pattern that looks like this. The two question marks is a one, and then these three. Uh, I'll make these blue for now. And then if we were to look from all the way to the right, these three, we don't get as much information in this row, but we can see that this one is always going to be in our unshaded run in this for the three glue. And then if we look at this four, the same thing is going to happen. If we have a question mark as a one and a one to minimize those, we're going to have these four from this side, or we're going to have these four from the right. So these three are always going to be in our unshaded run for the four clue. Um, looking at this five question mark, I'm going to minimize this, unshaded, shaded, and then five. And then looking from the left for the five, again, these three. We're going to overlap it's just the inverse of this row same logic again let's look at these columns now we can probably do some more with these let's start here with this four question question so again minimize the question marks and then look where we overlap and we get three three cells is always being in and i'll go through these a little bit quicker now that i've walked through a few examples um, this one here. So this one here is forced. So if we minimize these question marks as ones, uh, we'll get one unshaded here, then one, then one, and then three is all that's left, but that's our top clue. So this row we actually know the composition of. So we can uh, separate our runs with these shaded cells. And this one is done, so I'll mark that off. Always when I finish a row, I always like to take a look again and go back through. So again, this six now, we have an unshaded cell here, or a shaded cell. So we know that this one can't be unshaded because we don't we only have a run of six. We don't have another one or a question mark here. So that's shaded. And then we're gonna have at least uh, six from this side. So we know that these two are gonna be in the unshaded run no matter what. And then one of these two will be. And again, we have this three clue here. So this one can't be unshaded because it can't be three long. And then if we go one and then three, um, we're gonna get these three and then those, those overlap here. So this one's always gonna be in our run of three for the row. Okay, let's go back up here. So this is interesting. We start this column with a three run. So um, because this is unshaded, this has to be our run of three. And then we'll, we only have one additional clue. So we can't put a shaded cell here because that would show two different consecutive runs. So that has to be unshaded. And that actually finishes our sixth clue in this row. 
So we can make this shaded and mark this as done. Now we don't know the length of this. This could stop here and this could grow the whole rest of the, the column. We don't know that yet. Um, let's look at this column. So we've got a question mark, a question mark, and then five. And again, we're sort of forced uh, to make this column um, unshaded in this pattern because that's the only way to fit those. So these question marks are minimized as ones. Um, taking a look back over here, we know here that um, we have a run of four to end the row, and we already have our three here. So this has to be four now that we have this shaded cell. And we also know we have two question marks, so two other runs of unshaded. So the only place to put our second one, we have one here, the only place to put the second one is in this cell. And now this row is done. And this row, this column is done. Um, looking at this column here, you have two, one as a minimum, two, and then one as a minimum. So again, this column is forced to be in this pattern. Finish that up. Um, looking back to the left, okay, we can see this five clue here is satisfied. So we need to have some shaded cells surrounding it. Um, this row is going to end in a three, so these two are going to be unshaded. And again, we need two separate runs on the left, so um, the only way that works is if we make this cell shaded. So that's done. Um, now looking at this column again, we have a question mark. Somewhere up here we have a run, and then we have five to end. So we already have four in a row that has to be unshaded. That's shaded. Uh, in this row, we have a five to start. So the only way to do that is to make this unshaded. Um, that also fixes our four. And then we have a question mark and a question mark. So that those are uh, corresponding to these two cells. So we finished this row, or this column. Um, we also have finished this row here. So we have these seven. So we can fill that in. Um, this row, we have a three here, uh, followed by some number of cells there. So let's fill that in. OK, let's keep looking at our columns that we haven't done yet. We don't know much about this column yet. So we know that there's going to be two consecutive runs, but that could be these five plus this one. It could be anything, really. So next is this column with a six. So because we have a shaded cell here, we have to fit these three as our, or these six cells as our consecutive run here. And similarly, in uh, column nine, we have a shaded cell here. So the only place to fit five consecutive unshaded cells in is right here. And both these end in a question mark, and we don't know exactly what's going to happen yet. Um, so row one is done by that. Um, we also see here that um, we have our two satisfied over here, so this has to be shaded. Um, we don't know how big this one is yet because that's just a question mark. So this could be shaded or unshaded at this point. Um, that might be all we can do up until now from just the standpoint of purely looking at the nonogram clues. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these sums. Okay, so in row five here, um, we have a sum of seven. And we only have one shaded cell so far. So if we were to place a seven here, that would mean that this is an unshaded cell and the only we only have one shaded cell. But seven is a prime number. And so because this is not a red seven, uh, we can't do that. So actually we have to have a shaded cell here to finish this row off. Again, still don't know anything about this column. All we know is that we can't have like a shaded cell here and then an unshaded here because we only have two consecutive runs. So we can't we can't break this run up. 
Okay, and the other thing we can look at is uh, a little trick you can do with the, with this puzzle is because we know that this is not a prime number, um, we, we have to know the two digit prime numbers. But in this row, if we have a prime number, we know that our two digit number here can't end in an even number because it would be divisible by two. It can't end in a five uh, because it would be divisible by five. So we automatically know this cell is going to be either one, three, seven, or nine. And to get to a sum of seven, we can't use a seven or a nine. So this is either one or three, and that'll be accompanied by a four or a six. Now something else we can look at is this five here. So we can only make, uh, if you have, uh, any number of cells looking at each other, you can either make a sum of five in one cell, which you can't in this case because we have two untreated cells, but we can't make it in three because the minimum that three digits that see each other in Sudoku, or one plus two plus three would be six. So this has to be a two digit sum. And so we know that both of these are unshaded cells. And we also know that this digit is either gonna be a two or a four to get to our sum of five. Now in this row, we have a sum of 18. Um, so these two are either gonna be summed to 16 or 14. So they're gonna be some pretty high numbers. Um, if it's 14, it's gonna be at least, uh, at least five, if we wanna mark that. If it's 14, it can't contain a seven. If it's 16, it'll be seven, nine, so it will contain a seven. Okay, something else we can look at is a 17 clue here. So right now we only have one shaded cell in this column. And to get to a sum of 17, we need at least two shaded cells. Um, so that resolves this column is being done. And we also know that the only way to make 17 and two cells in, with Sudoku is with an eight and a nine. And because this is prime, we can't end an eight because it'll be divisible by two. So we have a first couple digits, we have an eight and a nine to make 89 as the prime number. Okay. Now this is about the point in the puzzle where I got stuck last time. I got a few more pencil marks in and I reached out to the setter to ask what to do um, you know, in this position. What, what am I supposed to be looking at? Didn't ask for the step to find, but asked for like a nudge in the right direction. And I encourage you, if you're not doing this already as a solver, um, number one, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to the setters of these puzzles. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll speak for myself as a setter. I love it when people reach out to me asking questions about puzzles. I'm happy people are solving them in the first place. Most of us are very approachable from that standpoint. But try to get in the habit of asking if you're looking for tips on how to solve puzzles or asking how to solve a particular setter's puzzle. Don't just ask for the next step, ask for, you know, what should I be thinking about and try to get there on your own. It'll help you as a, a solver and even as a setter too, looking for new ideas. Um, but in this uh, position, there's a trick here that I didn't see with these nonogram clues. And that has to do with, you know, what happens if uh, with this 14 sum. Now what's the maximum number of uh, cells that you can have sum to 14? a maximum number of different digits to use? And the answer is four. We can't use five. So if all of these were shaded, I'll just give this as an example, I'll call it the blue. Um, if all of these were shaded, the minimum sum would be one plus two plus three plus four plus five, which is 15. Um, so we know that this isn't true, that we only have one or zero uh, shaded cells in, in, in this domino here in these two cells. Now, if this cell was shaded and this cell was unshaded, that means that we now have three different runs of uh, unshaded cells, but our row only has two clues. So that actually can't be true. This cell can never be shaded. So this is unshaded. And that actually helps us here um, a little bit with these sums. So in this, column, something I haven't looked at yet, is we have an eight sum. 
Uh, but this cell here can only be four or six. So we need one more shaded cell in this column and it has to go here. And now this column is done. This column is done. And really the only ones we have left are this one and these two, but we might be able to get there with our the, the, the step that I didn't see the first time. Um, to make this into eight, we can't use four because we'd have to use another four here and violate the rules of Sudoku. So this is six, this is two. And now our eight sum is done, the 17 is done. And the seven here is gonna be done because we know six plus one is seven and 61 is a prime number. So that's okay since this is a red clue. And now this five is done because we can put a four here and make that 41 as another prime number. Okay, now looking at this, this row, we have a sum of 14 here, and we already have nine plus two as uh, something to 11. So we need three more. Now, if this was shaded, we would need these two cells to sum to three, but the only way to do that would be with one and two and repeat the two in the row. So we know this is unshaded and this is shaded and this is our three. Okay, and our 14 sum is done. Okay, now if we look at this column again, we have two consecutive runs, we have one here. And so if we put a shaded cell here now, um, we would have three consecutive runs um, and that's not allowed. So this has to be unshaded and that resolves our shading for all of these. So the only ones left here are in column four and row two. We're not quite sure what this is yet, but we'll get there. Okay. Some of the next steps here, what do we wanna look at next? We know that these two cells are gonna to sum to seven. There's a lot of ways to do that. Apologies if you hear the train in my speakers um, that's going on down the street. Uh, maybe let's look at this 11 clue uh, because we know this has to be a prime number. So again, um, this cell is gonna be one, three, seven, or nine to make this prime. Uh, it can't be one because this would have to be 10. So this clue is either gonna be eight, four, or two. Okay, now if we look at this 11 clue, we already have three. So these, this either this is an eight by itself, or this is a two cell sum summing to eight. And either way, this can't be a four. Because if, if we had two cells and this was a four, we'd have to repeat the four in row two, column four. So that's not four and that's not seven. Now, the other thing here that I just noticed is we have a 10 clue in column six. So if this was a nine, we'd have to have both of these cells sum to one. Obviously we can't do that. So this is a three, this is an eight. And then we have this 11 clue now is satisfied. So this has to be an unshaded cell and we finished our shading. And we also have our 11 clue done and this 11 clue done. Both of these are 83. So those are prime numbers. We're good to go there. Okay, I'm um, looking at some Sudoku. We have three in this column. Doesn't quite do a lot yet. Okay. We know these two sum to seven. So they can be one, six, or two, five. Oops. Not sure what I did there. Um, we don't get help by Sudoku. And this is also now um, right here. This seven clue is either going to be one, six, or two, five as well. This 10 clue might be interesting. So again, our options here, since this is prime, is one, three, seven, and nine. And to sum to 10, this also would then, if this is one, this is nine. If this is three, this is seven. This is seven, this would be three, but it can't be. So that's not seven. And if this is nine, this is one. 
Okay, and now our seven clue is going to help us out here because this can't be seven or nine. So this has to be one and this has to be six. It's done. And then this has to be a nine to make 10 clue work. And 19 is a prime number. Okay, looking at the 16 clue, we need these two cells to sum to seven again. Seems to be a theme for this puzzle. Um, so again, we have one, two, five, and six here. So we have one, two, five, and six here. Again, either one, six, or two, five pair. And then again, looking over here, um, this has to sum to seven. It's also one, two, five, and six. Uh, this uh, 15 clue here. So we already have 14 in the row. So this has to be a one. This 18 clue has four. So these have to sum to 14. So these do not include a seven. And we have an eight in the box. So these are not six, eight. This has to be five, nine to end of 14 plus four is 18. So that's good. We approximately know this sum. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this as done. We don't have to think about this. Whichever way we fill this out, it'll be OK. OK, I'm going to look this 13 here. So we have 1. So these have to sum to 12. So this is either 9, 3, or 5, 7. Um, just thinking about the 16 clue is a little bit of leeway still. If this is a 9, these would have to sum to 7, which is fine. If this is 5, these would have to sum to 11. Oh, so, okay. So if this is 5, these two cells have to sum to 11. Um, this wouldn't be able to be a one, so this has to be two nine, which it can't be. So if this is five, this would have to be five or six. It couldn't be five. And if it's six, that would be five plus six is eleven. We would need to repeat the five in the in the column. Um, just to type it out, if it's easier to visualize. If this is five, this couldn't be one. We can't have two nine there. Can't have five because we already placed it. And for this to be six, this would have to be five. So that does not work. This has to be a nine. This has to be a five. Um, looking at this column here, we have a sum of six already. So this has to be a seven. Now these two cells sum to seven to make the 14 clue work. Take this off first. This is also one, two, five, and six. And this nine means these two cells sum to seven. So an interesting thing we can do here, we have a lot of seven sums bouncing around the grid. And if one of the if this is one, this is going to be six, this is going to be one, this is going to be six, they're going to bounce around the grid. So no matter what we have, uh, whether it's a one, six, or a two, five, they're all going to be the same. And so I want to actually color these. Um, if you, if you don't like subcoloring, I apologize, but I tend to do this where I'll kind of do a hash mark of blue, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, and yellow. And this might help us with our Sudoku um, as we go throughout the rest of this puzzle. But I think we're at the point where all we have left are a bunch of leftover seven sums in two digits. So I think it's about time that we do some Sudoku. Some more Sudoku. Um, looking at ones. Not very restricted. I remember in the first version of this puzzle, uh, there was actually some pretty intricate Sudoku left over at the end, uh, which I was surprised by. We might get something similar here, actually. Um, threes. Except in this case, there aren't a lot of restricted digits here. But let's keep looking. Six. Uh, 
that there. Eight is in one of these three. And then nine. Ah, nine in this box is in one of these two. And then in this box is here. Oh, I just noticed something here. We have a six in this box. So this, the, our yellow cells here, this can't be a six. So our, none of our yellow cells can be six. And likewise, since this can't be six, our blue cells cannot contain a one. Let me make sure I didn't miss any other Sudoku like that. I don't think so. So let's look at ones again. One, one can be in one of these three. I did one of these two. I really want to mark that as where the one goes in there. Okay. Yeah, three in this this row is a little bit tough to place, but it'd still be in those positions. brush up on my classic Sudoku here. Seven is in one of these three. Does I have to do, I wonder if it has to do with this not being able to be a prime number. Again, I'm not great at my three digit prime numbers, uh, but like if this is a one, because two and five are not going to be prime. But if this is one, this is six. So I can look and see if 691 is a prime number. It is a prime number. So if this was a one, this would have to be a six. And this would be 691 as a prime number, but this is not a red clue. So this is actually not a one. So the blue is not six. And these are not one. So, okay. This is going to help us with our Sudoku, I think. So we've got a bunch of two five pairs now throughout the grid. Um, I say that, but I have to actually follow through and solve the puzzle. So what can these cells be? Um, can't be one, two, three. Could be four. Can't be five, six, seven, and nine. So what in the row is in one of these two cells? Ah, uh, okay. So we also have a two five pair looking up this way and we have two five pairs here. So two and five in this box have to be in these two cells. So this is also uh, four, six or seven. And so our nine is up here. And so our nine is not here. So this is our nine. Um, Okay, again in this box, so our two fives. Okay, so we have a five in the box already, but we don't have a two. So we've got a two five pair, so our two cannot go here. We've also got a two five pair in column one, so two can't go here. So two in this box goes there. So 
So this is sometimes a little bit tough to see, but when you see these twos, and you've also got this two five pair, um, these can't be twos, these can't be twos, and this can't be two. And this two five pair means that this can't be two. So two in this box is in one of those two cells. Something similar on fives, I'm guessing. Five is over here. Uh, five can't be here, and five can't be here because of this two five pair. So these are from, have contain the five somewhere. Okay, Just looking for some more Sudoku to do. I'm looking where our two five pairs are. What's left in this box? Uh, we've got three, four, six, and seven. This can't be six. This can't be seven. So our six is in one of those three. And in box six, um, it's in one of these two um, due to the rows, but then it's actually right here. And so up in box three, our six is up there. But also now we've locked one into one of these two cells. So using Sudoku, our one in box three is here. Using some more Sudoku, um, our one in box one is up there. Um, box seven, our one is there. And then box eight. And that's, I think, um, all but two of the ones. Keep it, let's keep this going. Let me make sure I didn't make a mistake there. That felt a little weird. Um, got these two ones and this one. Yep, that was right. Okay. Um, more Sudoku. Uh, one is in one of these two, but it's not there. So it must be there. And then in this box, the only place left in the grid for a one is there. Nice. What else can we find? So five in this box can't go here and can't go here because of these two five pairs looking into the box. So our five in box nine is there. We still need four, six, seven, and eight. That's not seven. That's not six. That's not six. Can't. Still looking at places where two and five intersect to maybe restrict our candidates. So these cells are, uh, can't be one, two, they're three, four, can't be five, six, seven, eight. Uh, this can't be eight or four. Okay. So in this box, our four and our eight are here. That might be helpful because these can't be four or eight. So those can be three. They're not one, two, three. They're three, not four, not five, not six. Seven, eight, nine, and they're not seven. So that's not seven. Ah, okay. This is easier to see than pencil marking a lot of things, but um, I do tend to over pencil mark. But there are as a seven looking into this box here. So in box nine, the seven is in one of these cells. Uh, more importantly, though, this is not a seven now. So this is a three. That's not a three. Uh, the bees are not three. So we got a four, seven, eight triple here now. So there's no eight here. Let's clean up some of these pencil marks too. We now have a triple. So this row is getting crowded now. We have one, two, three. We still need four, six, and eight. And this cell can't be a six. So we have a four, eight pair now. This is a six. Six out of there and there. Nice. Okay. Let's 
take a look at this column now. We still need three, four, five, and seven. There's no seven here. There's no three here. Uh, this row looks like it's a little bit restricted, so you need three, seven, and eight. So this can't be three because of this three, and this three is that three. So three is the only place, or here's the only place for three in the row. Okay, here's another thing I just saw. So we have this two five pair looking at this cell. We have one of the two fives in this cell here, but none of these cells can be two or five. So where's the other two or five in this column? The only place is right here. The other way to look at that would, would just be fill in these candidates. Um, Cause we still need four, seven, eight, and nine. And so you would end up with a kind of quadruple here. So this would become two, five. I actually don't want to pencil mark this because the grid is already getting a little bit cluttered. Uh, okay, so this might help us a little bit too. We've got this blue 2 5 here. So now this has to be the yellow 2 5. And actually, the yellow is going to be a little tough to see. So I want to change this to orange just to make it stand out against the green a little bit more. Okay, so this orange 2 5 looks up. This is the blue 2 5. This is the orange 2 5. Okay, now using color Sudoku, as I like to call it, uh, we have our orange 2 5 here and here. So it, our orange 2 5 has to go somewhere here in box one. Two and five are not nine. Shocker. And the orange 2 5 is already here. So this has to be our orange 2 5, but now we don't have we can't put two in this cell. So this actually is five, and that tells us that all of our orange cells are five, and because orange and blue sum to seven, all of our blue cells are now two. And that actually fixes all the rest of our sums. So now all of our shaded cells um, have been filled in. So I can get rid of this other coloring here to avoid any confusion here. Um, now I have to go back and check for some pencil marks. So these twos, and this two, looking at this box, so our two in box three is here. Oops. Uh, two looks down, so by Sudoku, two's there. And I think one more two to place right there by Sudoku. Um, so this is not a two. Uh, let's look at fives. Yeah, we got all the fives but one, and that five goes here. Um, this column needs four, seven, and nine still. Uh, this is not four. Uh, this box still needs seven, eight, and nine. Uh, this row here needs four, six, seven. Or that's not six, using Sudoku. Okay, this box, um, that's not five. Uh, this needs to be three, four, or eight. Uh, this is four, seven, eight, and nine. That's not eight. Uh, what else can we find? Ah, here we go. So this uh, row has a four, seven, eight triple. So in other words, where does six go in row nine? Can't go here, can't go here, and can't go here. So six is there. Take six out of those cells. So now in box two, that we have another four, seven, nine, triple. So this is a six. Sixes do we have? Ah, this six looks right at this pencil mark. That's a six. 
and so six is here and six is here. So we have a little X-wing type pattern there with these sixes being locked in. So you think we've done the twos, we did the ones already. What about threes? I don't think we know enough about threes yet. We only have one four in the grid right now. Done with fives. Uh, sixes, we have our pattern on sixes, seven. Again, we don't know much about seven. Eight. Ah, that's what I was missing. So this eight looks down, making this a seven. Get rid of all these sevens. Uh, this is an eight. We have a seven, nine pair now looking down. That makes this three and this nine. Uh, this column needs a, an eight. So this is not eight. You now have, oh, this six looks over, this is not six. So we have a six, eight pair here using our pencil marks. This is not five, so this is three, four, and seven, but it's not seven. Feels like we're almost done with this. Uh, four, seven, so this is triple. Three, four, seven. I filled in some digits. This column needs a four and a nine, still. Uh, okay, we had a four, seven, nine, triple in this column, so this must be our eight uh, to finish the column. Take eight out of here, eight out of here. We now have a three, four pair. So this is a nine, this is a seven. Uh, this eight looks, and this is a four, and this is a seven. This four makes this an eight, and this a four. That looks over making this eight. Uh, this eight looks up, making this six and this eight. There's no six here, so our six in box four goes here. Come on, find the Sudoku. Uh, this nine looks up, making this a four. That a nine, that an eight. This nine looks over, makes this seven and nine. This four makes this a three and a seven and a four. Seven. Uh, this four looks down, making this three, this four, this three, this four. Okay, so we have a seven nine pair here. So this is our four, seven, four, three. This seven makes, looks up, making this nine and this seven. And that is the solution to Nogradoku 2. Uh, try number two for Nogradoku 2. Um, I love this puzzle just as much as the first one. Uh, thank you, Jujawa, for suggesting that I solve this one too. Um, this one had a little bit of a higher level uh, shading logic, uh, which I, I missed the first time, but I enjoy nonetheless. And then um, I like the idea here of using all of the different sort of leftovers or the sums of seven uh, and sort of force you into thinking about um, where those go throughout the grid and how they bounced around. They're all the same pair. And again, um, you managed to make the end of this puzzle a really nice Sudoku, um, a fairly challenging one, uh, but not, not overly challenging, a nice right in line with the difficulty of the rest of this puzzle. So thanks again. Thanks to Bremster for inviting me back to solve another puzzle on your channel. And um, hope you all enjoy and uh, good luck with your solving.